Okay, guys, today we're going to talk about equivalent fractions and how to make an equivalent fraction based off the theory of the giant one. Now, the giant one is going to be used for the rest of your CPM career, so we're really going to take time with this, and we're going to practice it. We're going to practice it in two ways today. One, making a larger fraction, and two, making a smaller fraction. Both are equivalent, so we're, but they're going to look a little different. Um, now, when we use that word equivalent, we mean equal to. That's what equivalent means. So we're going to create a fraction that's equal to two-thirds, and we're going to use a giant one to do so. So we're going to go to our first step. So our first step is to create a giant one. Now, all you have to do is draw a giant one. That's it. That's your first step. The second step is that we're going to multiply the fraction and the giant one together. So right now we're just going to put the multiplication symbol there. We don't have enough to completely finish this yet, but we know we're going to multiply these two things together. Our, our third step in solving on how to make an equivalent fraction is to create a giant one. Now with the numerator and denominator. Now we've already created a giant one here. We drew a big one. Now we're really going to figure out what goes on the inside, and we're going to have a numerator and a denominator to represent that. Now we know a 1 equals 1. There's multiple ways that 1 could be represented. Um, so, for example, down here, if I had 2 over 2, and I thought up, that would be 2 divided into 2, which would be 1. That's a giant 1, you guys. If I put 2 and 2 here, that's the same as saying 1. Now if I had 3 over 3, that would be a giant 1. 4 over 4, that's a giant 1. 5 over 5, all of those are giant 1, you guys, because they all, when you think up, they all equal 1. That's why we call it the giant 1. So we have multiple examples here, and we're going to stick with our 2 over 2 example. I'm going to erase these. We're going to stick to that 2 over 2. Now, you can use any giant one that you want. It's always going to work. You're always going to create an equivalent fraction if you use the giant one. So pick whatever numbers you want. Just make sure that the numerator and the denominator are the same number because you want to get that value of one. Our third step and final step is to just multiply across. When we multiply fractions, we literally multiply across multiplying the numerator times the numerator and the denominator times the denominator. So what that looks like is 2 times 2 and 3 times 2. Now we're going to evaluate that and that's going to give us 4 sixths. 4 sixths and 2 thirds are equivalent. They are saying the same thing. Let me prove it to you. 2 thirds is a fraction in its simplest form. 2 thirds equals 4 6. 4 6 is the same. And that's because if I divide it by 2, I get 2 thirds. And if I divide each one of those by 2, 2 into 4 is 2, 2 divided into 6 is 3. That's why I know that they're equivalent. I'm just making a number a little bit bigger. Now remember, you could use any giant, you could use any giant one to prove this. So if I'm just going to follow those step by steps again and I look at 2 thirds, and this time, I'm going to draw my giant one. I'm going to multiply these two things together. And this time, instead of using 2 over 2, I'm going to try 5 over 5. Again, it doesn't matter what number I use. I'm going to multiply across. 2 times 5 equals 10. And 3 times 15. 3 times 5 equals 15. Now let's see if we see if we made an equivalent fraction. What can go into 10 and into 15? Well, if I think about it, 5 can go into both. So I divide both by 5. 5 can go into 10 twice. And 5 can go into 15 three times. I've made two equivalent fractions. So 4 6 and 10 15 are both equivalent to 2 thirds. That's how you use the giant one to make a larger um, equivalent fraction. Now we're going to take it to having a big fraction 
and then reducing it using the giant one. That means we're going to make a smaller fraction. So now I'm going to look at this big fraction, and I'm going to think, how do I make that smaller using the giant one? So again, I'm going to draw my giant one. We're going to use that same step by step, and I'm going to multiply it. Now I need to remember, I need to make this smaller. I want a smaller number. I want a smaller fraction. So what can I multiply in order to get it smaller? Now when I'm making sense of this giant one and trying to get this fraction low, I know I'm really, what I'm really looking at is kind of dividing, but I have that multiplication symbol in there. But don't worry, I'm going to show you kind of how to do this. Um, so I'm looking at 35 over 50, and I want to start thinking in my head, what number can go into both of those things? And I'm going to give you a little bit of a clue here. I'm going to give you the denominator of 10. That denominator of 10 is going to kind of give you a kickstart of what number can go into both of these, um, these two numbers, the 35 and the 50. Automatically, I'm going to think, okay, 5 over 5. Now, some of you guys might be confused because if you look at that, 35 times 5 is going to be a big number, and then 50 times 5 is definitely not 10. So we expand our giant one. We're going to make it a little bit bigger. make it a really big one right there. And that looks a little weird, but hang with me. And I'm going to expand my giant one in the way I look at the giant one. I'm going to do some multiplying in that. So I think 5 can go into both of those things. But 5 times what equals 35? Oh, 7. 5 times 7 equals 35, showing that 5 can go into 35 7 times. And that's going to be my number here. Now 5 times 10 equals 50. So by dividing 5 into 10, 5 into 50, that's going to give me the number of 10. And that's how I got those numbers. Now that looks a little bit confusing. You guys might just be comfortable with looking at that and figuring out what number can go into both, which is 5, and you divide by 5. And you get your same result. 5 into 35 is 7. Ooh, excuse me. 5 divided into 35 is 7. 5 divided into 50 is 10. These are two methods. Both methods work great. You pick one. I don't care. Whatever works best for you. You will see this in CPM, and we will practice it, but you do what works best for your brain. So again, to wrap up, we just figured out how to do equivalent fractions, how to make a number larger, and then how to reduce a number to its lowest terms. Um, make sure you have all of these in your math notebook, and good luck with the rest of your homework.